Hey, Michael here. Listen, is it really is it really an objection, or is it just a stall? I mean, that's the question we got to ask ourselves after doing a full-on presentation with a potential customer, a potential buyer, and you know they've let us in their home or they've been with us doing our demonstrations and sat through our presentations and and, and been a part of this and been engaged in this process for what 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 120 minutes. And you get all through everything, and then they give you this thing that we all call this objection, right? And and, and I, I'm looking at these objections, and I really pay attention to when. You know, know customers give them and and the reality is is most of the time it's really not an objection I mean really pay attention and, and next time that you hear one of these and, and in context in the whole context of what's going on and everything every, all the time you've been in their house most of the time it's really not even an objection it's just a stall it's just a way for them to kick this to the curb for a, you know, for a day or for two days or to buy them some time or give them an opportunity to you know, not make a decision, take the pressure off. Not that you put a lot of pressure on them, but people have a natural, you know, um, it's just natural. It's part of our, I don't know, DNA, right, to, to just hold off on making decisions. The larger the purchase, the longer we need to quote unquote think about it. But the whole reason why we do that is because we're afraid. Right? I mean, we're just scared. We just don't want to make a mistake. So really put that in context. I mean, go back to what we just said. You were just in my house for 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 120 minutes. I mean, really, I've got all the information as a consumer. I'm more educated today than anybody before me. I mean, we've got Google. We've got the Internet. We've got head-to-head comparisons. we got company reviews. We've got Yelp. We've got Google+. Plus, We've got Angie's List. We've got all these services out there to protect the consumer. And I've looked at all of them as a consumer. And I've done my due diligence. And I've done my research. I even, hell, I even know about the product. A lot of times I know about the product more than the, the sales professional or amateur sitting across the table from me, right? So so are you, so do you, so do your customers. So understand that these objections, we, we give them too much weight, we give them too much value, we put too much focus and emphasis on them, because the reality is they're not objections, they're just simply stalls. The customer is saying, hey, I like everything you had to say. Matter of fact, man, I like you. I've let you sit in my office, I've let you sit in my house, I've offered you water, I might have even fed you. I mean, at this point, we're we're, we're, we're more than just, we're not strangers, right? I mean, at this point, we could very well be friends or the beginning of a, of a friendship, but I like you and I trust you, or she wouldn't have been in my house for 90 minutes, for 60 minutes, for 120 minutes. There's no chance. I would have had a reason for you to leave earlier. Make no mistake about it. Your customers are no different. So they're just afraid. They're just scared of making a, an error. So put it in context. They let me be in your house for this long. They want to buy from you. They want to do business. But this natural, you know, this built-in defensive mechanism, part of our DNA tells us we got to give an automatic response. We've got to give an automatic stall. And you do the same thing. So do I. I mean, if I do, as a guy, I'm not driving across town to some store to go window shop, to just go look around. It's not going to happen. If I'm driving 45 minutes one way to Cabela's and I park my truck in a 160 degree asphalt parking lot and then walk across that parking lot to enter in through the the grand entrance and get up to the turnstiles, there's going to be a greeter right there. And that greeter's going to be smiling, be an approachable person, and they're going to ask me a simple question. They're going to say, hello, welcome, thank you for coming in. Can I help you find anything? And what do I say? What do you say? Nine times out of ten, we all say the same thing, don't we? Nah, I'm just looking. That's crap. That's complete BS. We didn't drive all the way across town to look, but it was an automatic response. It was something that I didn't have to think about. It just comes out. And when it comes out for me, I can guarantee it, it comes out for you. And it comes out for our customers. So when it's time, after we've done all of our due diligence, we've done all of our investigating, we've educated the customer, we've done the presentation, we've showed the benefits, we've showed them the investment, we've showed them how this makes logical sense, we've gotten them emotionally evolved. I mean, they're ready to go, and then this automatic response response comes out what do you do right first of all don't take it personal it's not you it's an automatic response 
don't assume it's an objection. See, that's what most people do. The first thing that is said by the customer, they feel like, oh, that's what's holding them back. Well, it's probably really not what's holding them back. It's just automatic, man. So you got to confirm. You got to make sure that it's even an objection. So my advice to you right now is stop handling the first complaint, the first objection, or what you feel is an objection from your customers when you ask for the sale as an objection. Don't give it the weight, right? Deal with it like it is, a stall. That's all it is. It's an automatic response. It's just a stall. Make sure that it is truly the objection before you go to work on it, before you, you start you know, working on your price, before you start changing the proposal or the scope of work. At the end of the day, make sure that that is just, it really is an objection and it's not just a stall. Huge, huge, huge mistake of most sales professionals is the first thing out of the customer's mouth is they feel is the only thing that's holding them back and that's just not the case. Most of the time, there's really nothing holding them back. They just need reassurance. They just need to know that they're making the right decision. They need to know that, you know, that you're not going to take advantage of them. They need to know this is the right, you know, product for their needs. And that's all they need. They just need confirmation because they've, again, let you in their house for what? All this time, been in their office, they've given you an hour of their time. Time's the most valuable thing that we have nowadays, man. People don't give it away to people they don't want to be around and people that they're not serious about doing business with. So look at it for what it is. If you've been in that, the longer you've been with that customer, the more they want to do business with you or they would have had you leave. They would have said something like, hey man, how much longer is this gonna take because I gotta get my kids? And they may not even have kids but it's a way to get you out of their house. That's what you'll hear if they're not serious. But when you get all the way through your presentation and then they give you the first, what we call objection, treat it like a stall, bypass it. Don't give it the weight, make them validate it. Man, they say something to you like, oh man, that's just a lot of money. Yeah, you know what, most things are, man. I just need your authorization right here and right here and we'll go ahead and get you started. What? Yeah, I didn't even answer it. I acknowledged it, but I didn't even answer it. Oh, you can't do that, really? You can't do that? That's what people want. They just want confirmation. They want confidence. They want to deal with a professional. It's not arrogance, it's confidence. When you train and you practice hard, you can say things that most people can't say, and that's what people want to hear. Validate that that price is hold, the only thing holding you back, and I'll be happy to answer that objection and show you all the ways that it's afford, that just costs you too much money not to pull the trigger. But when you first say it, when the first time you hear that, that's an observation. That's not an objection. Man, that's a lot of money. Your customer's literate. That's what that means. I mean, seriously, it means that they can read. It means that, yep, you know what? There's, everything's a lot of money. You, you tell me one person ever in the history that you know, yourself, me, anybody that you know that's ever walked in a store be like, man, I can't believe it. This is like half the price I thought it was gonna be. People don't say that, man. You walk in, you see something you really like, you get all the options and features that you want to add to it, and you're like, damn, man, it's more money than I thought it was going to be. Because we always want more. That's human nature. Man, it's just more money than I thought it was going to be. Holy cow. You know what? That's, that's a lot of money. But don't you still get it? Yep. So do I. Right? It doesn't matter. The money, it's, it's, it's not about the money. People just want to make sure that they're not making a mistake. So listen, the first objections you get, when you first hear that first objection, I don't care what it is, just treat it like a stall and close right through it and see what happens to your closing ratio. Look your customer dead in, your eye, dead in their eye. Be confident, smile, and just tell them, yeah, you know what, I agree, that is a lot of money. You know, but at the end of the day, when's the last time we've ever done a home improvement on our home that's coming at or below budget? It just doesn't happen, man. I just need your authorization right here and right here, and we'll go ahead and get this started for you as early as next week. Pass the pen and shut up. Don't say another word, right? Or there's multiple things, man. There's so many ways to handle. That's a lot of money. It's ridiculous. It's the easiest one to overcome because it's not even an objection. It's a stall. So just agree and reclose. Yeah, you know what? I agree. It's a lot of money. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, nobody really sits around and thinks about, you know, what these systems are going to cost. And, and, and with all the research and all the due diligence that you've done, I mean, if we were just looking at just doing a base model, base entry level system, I mean, it would be less money. But that's really not what's right for you after going through your whole house and you and I building the system that you wanted together. 
I mean, that, that's not going to serve your needs. That's not going to give you the benefits that you and your wife or you and your family are really looking for. So let's just go ahead and, you know, get your authorization right here and right here. We'll get this started for it so you can start enjoying this new system sooner rather than later. Shut up and pass the pen. I don't know, something, anything around those lines. Again, deliver it with confidence. Believe, again, your customer would not have you in their house for two hours if they weren't serious about doing business with you. So stop thinking that their first thing out of their mouth is the only thing holding them back or is an objection. It's not an objection, it's a stall. Answer it, reclose, move on. And if it is an objection, they will let you know. And then now it's an objection. Now we can handle that, work through it. But your customers are looking for a solution, man. They're looking for a solution to your problem.